It's, it's, it, in, in the UK, they couldn't do it over there. They couldn't dump those. Uh, it was illegal to dump the dispersants over there, but boy, they dumped them here in the States. And made money off of it. And I like the other part where the folks down there couldn't use uh, respirators that were working for BP because that was a bad image. And a lot of people were getting sick that were out there working. They were fainting and everything else. I mean, a lot of these reports were coming back in. And supposedly there are a lot of people down there inland that are having health issues. But they try to suppress everything. Everything gets hushed up. Why is that? Money, money, money. We're nobody. Seems diabolical to me. Um, one of the concerns that our water committee has is that uh, we experience droughts here. How much water goes into each fracking well, sometimes millions of gallons, and that's, that's our fresh water from the earth that we're drawing out and then pumping full of chemicals. So there goes our fresh water. You know, uh, water shortages could be a serious issue. Also, the roadways, if we're gonna have hundreds of thousands of big trucks on our roads, who's gonna pay to fix those roads? You do. Our tourism in, in southeastern Illinois, Garden of the Gods, people come from all over the world to see that sacred place. Uh, when the trucks are roaring past on the highways, are the bikers still going to come out for their, their Sunday bike rides? Or, you know, what, what is going to be the experience um, for our, our tourism in the area which we rely on? And that's a long-term thing. With, with this gas industry, there's a boom, and then there's a bust. Where does the bust leave us? Well, that's, that, you're, you're right on all those topics. And, you know, as far as the roads... Yeah, the industry was coming in, and they'll, they'll fix the roads up. They'll repave here and there, and, and they, do, you know, they do some nice jobs, no question. Other places, it's very minor. They'll go in, and they'll just uh, take out the soft spots and mill it out and throw in some asphalt. The roads are definitely affected. There's no question about it. The landscape is affected, no question about it. When you take a look at the footprint of this and any field that they've done, uh, it's absolutely... It's mind-boggling, and uh, you can't live around it. But some people have to because they have no choice. I thought it was just the traffic. Stop it. People need to. You got to stick together, and and you got to start forming a large group, and you got to start doing what everyone's doing in Pittsburgh and in Ohio. There's going to be a huge rally in Ohio, folks. We're going to have a hundred thousand people probably in in Columbus. A lot of guys don't know. Farm, a lot of these landowners don't know. They, they, because they, they, they're sold on a conventional drilling, what's happened here in the past. It's unconventional. It's not conventional. Well, that's exactly what they're sold. That's what they're told by the landmen. We've heard the same, you know, we, we hold the same, we, we all heard the same stuff. These guys are out to make a living. I mean, face it, I mean, it, it's all common sense. They're out to make a living. They're going to tell you whatever and get that lease signed, and they're going to move on to the next fish to fry. It's like, you know, selling equipment, you know, like what I do. I mean, you sell a piece of equipment, now I gotta go hustle and I gotta go find another customer to try to sell a piece of equipment to. Um, but I don't lie. The, oil needs the government needs to step in and these folks need to be investigated because there is so, the, the, the criminal actions that are taking place are, oh yeah, well, we know that. That, and, that, and again, you know, that's where the people have to step up. And, and also, so that you know, um, July 28th, there's going to be a big rally in Washington, D.C. to stop fracking. July 28th. And I said this should have been done four years ago. Just, I just want to comment because I was at the Fairfield... Uh, last night, and I came up and spoke to Ron. I was born in Wayne County. My grandfather, who was Ben Nation, he actually um, had a farm and he drilled for oil back in the 50s. The problem there is, and I don't know which gentleman talked about how people don't understand, you got to realize not everybody's on the internet, not everybody knows about this. You know about the area that you live in. If you've lived there your whole life and you've lived with tradition, you go by what that tradition is, and you know what drilling was decades ago, as one farmer put it, uh, that was in the Chicago Tribune that I got from the SAFE website, uh, 
you know, we have a history here in Wayne County with drilling, so most people are comfortable with it. And that's the problem. And I stayed for a little while and talked to a farmer, Mr. Bruce, who's thinking maybe about leasing, but he's concerned. He's not on the internet. He doesn't understand that. And so what I'm gonna do is mail him Xerox stuff and mail it to him. And I said, go to the local library. They have internet access there. I guess basically what I can say, probably the most important thing you can do and what you said first thing last night is you have to talk amongst yourself and never assume that everybody understands everything. I didn't find out about this until, I mean, I'm in Maryland right down from Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. I feel foolish to think that this has been going on for a few years. I had no idea. I had no, I'm 30 miles from DC. I like to feel like I'm connected with the government. I've gone to D.C. and taken veterans during Gulf War illness and walked into Capitol Hill and had a conversation about that when we got together and rallied. I had no idea they were fracking in Pennsylvania. And that, sir, I am so sorry that this has happened to you. My grandfather's farm, my grandfather farmed behind a mule at the turn of the century, and I can guarantee he's ashamed right now. And I can guarantee last night what happened. My whole family, 12 of them, born in that area. They're all, the last one died three years ago, was in her 90s. They're ashamed. And I carry that shame for my family. And you're right. I'm in D.C. and I'm going to be at that rally. I'm going to show up in Columbus. I'm going to talk to Roscoe Bartlett, who sits on that committee for the environment and energy who's a farmer, a dairy farmer in Frederick County, and we're gonna get action. Cause we got the bay in Maryland, you're damn right, water rolls downhill, that shit ain't coming into our state. And if we gotta get our crap together and tell Pennsylvania to get theirs together, that's what has to happen. Talk to young people in this country, I teach. These kids are smart in school nowadays and they don't take anybody's crap. Not like our generation where we learned you fall in line and that's who we got to empower. You empower young people, you educate our generation, the older ones, and we will defeat this. That's how shit happens in this country. That's right. <laughs> well. I could tell you this, folks, you know, they'll say that uh, there's no water contamination. In 60 years of fracking, not one water well has ever been contaminated, right? Yeah. No, there hasn't been one. There have been thousands. Yeah. I'll take you through Pennsylvania and show you water buffaloes all over the place. And a lot of the companies that are selling water are laughing all the way to the bank. And I forgot to say that last night, which, uh, well, I was, I was uh, trying to keep my, my head together because I was so tired. Uh, from driving and everything and being up over 24 hours to be here so uh, But anyway, I uh, again I, I could uh, <laughs> If you spent one day with me as I've told many many people politicians alike Because none of them come out to see the constituents who have been affected. They don't care uh, You'd be crushed You'd be crushed 